digital dialogue webinar series. Please note that this webinar will be recorded. As such, a copy of this webinar recording will be made available to you and you can access that on our website following this session. Throughout this series, we're actually going to be looking and exploring all of the latest trends in digital transformation. And we're looking at how solutions in the digitization space are actually going to be really able to overcome some of those biggest challenges in the world today when it comes to uh, sustainability and efficiency and many others that we're covering. I'm Rose Wesby, Director for Digital Transformation here at ABB and your moderator for this series. This session will be dedicated to the trends in digital transformation and led by Anton Kotov, who is our Head of Strategy for Electrification. Now, Anton is joining us virtually over from Russia, and uh, we will be listening to a number of insights he is sharing from us. As well as sharing his insights, though, our speaker, Anton, is absolutely here to answer your questions live. As such, what we will be doing is collecting your questions throughout. Please feel free to use the Q&A function addressed to our panelists in this session, and we will be sure to get to those at the end of this session as well. Anton, I'm sure we'll be delighted to answer to them for you. So uh, with that, I am delighted to hand over now to our speaker over in Russia. Anton, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Rose. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hope you can see the screen well, hope, hope you can hear me well. Uh, I'm Anton Kordov and I lead uh, strategy, business development and digital for um, ABB electrification. It's a great pleasure to be here with you today and I hope that you will enjoy the sessions that we all prepared for you. I also hope that you can hear me well as, as again, I'm, I'm here in Siberia, the place where I'm originally from and where I'm currently visiting my family after the borders started to reopen. Yes. Uh, open and closed borders, virtual events caused by global pandemic, but the world is, is constantly changing. Well, it's, it's, it's getting faster and, and more difficult to predict. Uh, I bet none of us today uh, thought about the point of where we are today uh, back in the beginning of 2020. And while it's, it's pretty impossible to say what, what the world would be in the future, which, which I know contradicts with the, with the title of, of my today's presentation. Allow me to, um, uh, to share uh, with you and make a few points about what in ABB electrification um, we believe are the key customer needs and trends that shape our, our markets. So what we are positive about is that uh, the world is getting increasingly urbanized with more than two thirds of, of the population to live in the cities by 2050. Sustainability, uh, from carbon reduction and, and circularity to transparency, inclusion, and giving back to the local communities is, is more than ever on, on the agenda. And hand in hand with sustainability comes the transition towards cleaner energies, boosted by the cleaner mobility, as in, in 20 years, more than half of car sales come from the, from the electric vehicle. And um, while well-being has been prominently on the, on the agenda, 2020 emphasized the need for resilience like, like, like never before. And speaking of 2020, of course, and, and the turbulent times that we're living, it's impossible not to mention digitalization, the driving force behind the resilience that we are experiencing today. So let, let's really zoom on the, on the digitalization. Have we gone digital? Yes, of course, of course we have. Today we have this webinar in a fully digital format. You can digitally react to, you know, to, to my presentation by pressing a like or, you know, writing comments and I will play back instantly. Uh, and COVID-19 uh, pandemic has changed the world and accelerated the digital transformation, you know, in, a, in an unprecedented manner. However, uh, digitalization is not only about convenience and speed. Most importantly, uh, it's about improving business outcomes. Take ABB electrification customers. They find economic benefits in using ABB ability digital solutions to analyze, monitor, simulate, predict, control, optimize both the energy usage, improve the performance of their assets. It all helps save costs, deliver high efficiency, 
and improve business performance. Uh, digital technologies enable uh, our customers to run their sites and operations safer, smarter, and more sustainable. What are we doing to help them achieve even more? Let me start by introducing our digital transformation activities with this short video. All right, hope you can see and hear me back. Um, as you see, ABB has always been a, a technology pioneer, from, from power grids, electrification and motion, to industrial and discrete automation and robotics. Uh, in more than 130 years of history, we, we never forgot how innovation plays a key role in human progress and evolution. Uh, we have always been uh, the customer side to drive transformation over the years. Since 2016, uh, we've created uh, a digital platform called ABB Ability to deliver more value to our customers in a consistent manner. Let's quickly remind ourselves what ABB Ability stands for. ABB Ability solutions are typically combinations of products and services delivered by software and connectivity. These solutions are increasingly built from the common technology components at the device, edge, and cloud level that form the ABB ability. It is powered by a common uh, technology uh, platform. Uh, it's, it's based on, uh, on Microsoft Azure globally and also uh, on Huawei Cloud in China. Today, ABB offers more than 200 ABB ability digital solutions across our entire business portfolio that customers can deploy today, and we are developing even more. With ABB Ability, uh, you know, we deliver full power of our expertise to customers to improve business value, uptime, speed, yield, safety, and security. So what does it all mean uh, and what do we do in ABB Electrification to accelerate the digital transformation? Well, our strategy is focused uh, on meeting customer needs. And let me tell you more about its five pillars. The first one is more connected products. Connectivity is the lifeblood of, of digital, of course, and we will continue bringing our connected products to the field. Growing the, the installed base of, of our devices with embedded intelligence is the prerequisite to enable our digital services. And the second pillar is, of course, digital services. We also refer to them as ABB Ability Subscription-Based Software as a Service, in the areas of energy, asset building, and immobility management. This element is, is key, as these offerings not only help us differentiate on the market, but most importantly, deliver, they deliver this value proposition that helps you realize tangible business outcomes. Most of our sessions uh, today and, and tomorrow will be about how they help our customers to drive better performance, so you'll have a chance to, to learn more about, about these services. Then the third is digital customer experience, better digital customer experience. We aim to provide easy to navigate digital touch points for our partners and end users so they can effortlessly navigate through our website, configure products at ABB Connect Partner Hub, uh, find and subscribe to our services at ABB Ability Marketplace. The next pillar is simpler digital customer journey. With more than 80% of customers shaping their opinion uh, via the online research nowadays, everybody should be able to easily find ABB electrification products online and also to order them via by the e-commerce platforms. And last but not the least, of course, the digital tools for ourselves, for our internal processes and interaction with customers. 
we aim to really minimize necessary and automate manual touch points to gain efficiency in everyday tasks so that we can focus on the value add and activities where the human touch is, is really needed. All right, let's focus on the digital services. Let me give you a couple of examples. So the first one, an example that, that comes from the area of energy and asset management. Uh, hopefully it can illustrate what our solutions can do. Last year, ABB installed an intelligent predictive maintenance solution for power supplies that keep the world famous Burj Khalifa in Dubai running 24 seven. Using the ABB Ability electrical distribution control system, the tower's uh, facility management team can remotely monitor um, uh, the power supply of each of the 400 electrical loads at the site including uh, 57 elevators and a 24 megawatt air conditioning system, among other loads. One click uh, remote access via the smartphone, tablet, or, or PC allows the employees to monitor and manage key assets in real time. The maintenance service installed in uh, the Burj Khalifa can reduce operational costs by up to 30%, replacing the, the routine maintenance work. I, I think it's quite quite impressive example in, in a really iconic building that we have in the world. Another example comes from the building management area. Well, as, as you know, solutions for assisted living uh, are becoming increasingly important to support the elderly people. Uh, the project called My Life, My Way is, is the first project to use ABD's new open API platform to provide an alternative means of virtual support for social and clinical care provision with, uh, within the assisted living environments. Designed uh, to help large group of residents to, um, uh, to, to live better, this project was implemented by iHome Lab and the Bonacasa Smart Living. It, it uses the virtual assistant, uh, which supports assisted living in Bonacasa apartments in Switzerland, implemented by ABB uh, Free at Home. Called uh, Anne, this, uh, this assistant um, actually uh, interacts with residents through the voice control or a tablet. And the solution uses ABB Free at Home uh, through its open API, it uses My Building Portal and of course ABB Ability Cloud Platform to enable users to easily control lighting, the blinds, the heating, the ventilation, air conditioning, as well as the, the secure entry system in the apartments. So kind of a different example uh, compared to the, to the first one. But would it be possible to, to bring these solutions into life alone? Definitely not. That's why uh, our digital strategy is built on the ecosystem of partners. What makes digital partnerships so exciting for us and, and of course so rewarding for you is the access that it offers. When we align with partners like Microsoft, uh, Huawei, Accenture, HP, Dassault System or IBM, our combined expertise and technology capabilities enable leading IoT solutions. Together, we can develop solutions quicker, increase end-to-end -end automation, offer better connectivity and increase value for our customers. And while we have powerful offering with strong return on investment potential, these partnerships also help us to deliver smarter solutions across the value chain and for sure enable customers to get more productivity and, and more benefit. So where, where do we see the key domains for our future investments in digital uh, to continue maximizing the value for our customers? Whether it's a commercial building, an e-bus depot, a data center, a distribution grid operation, uh, a, a dairy plant or, or a refinery. We identified four main areas where our customers can, can definitely benefit from, from, from our solutions across the industries. First is energy management, uh, to reduce energy consumption and make a better usage of all energy sources, including renewables. Then asset management, to help uh, keep your electrical equipment healthy, reducing failures and saving maintenance costs. Building management, for sure, to enable uh, people aware buildings that sense and adapt to, to human behaviors, whether you're at work or at home. And for sure, electric mobility, to drive uh, transformation towards sustainable transport and make, make it not only the greenest, 
but also the most economically efficient one. Altogether, we believe that this digital solution based on increasing proliferation of IoT technologies and connected devices will bring further tangible economic benefits to our customers and help them in, in the journey towards safe, smart, and sustainable electrification. Uh, Andrea Simpriti, uh, who is driving digital for AED electrification, will give you a deeper introduction to these areas right now after my session, and you will also have a chance to hear from, uh, from my colleagues about each of these solutions and their benefits in, in, the, next, uh, in the next three days. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, now I will be happy, to, of course, to, to, take, uh, to take all your questions. So, uh, uh, Rose, uh, over to you if, if we have any, any questions. Thank you very much, Anton, and thank you for sharing all those insights and a wonderful introduction to the next three days in this digital dialogue series. Uh, with that, of course, we are here and primed and ready, I believe, Anton, to answer all of your burning questions. So please feel free to use the Q&A function we have available for you in the WebEx features so that we can see your questions and answer them right away. But Anton, just to kick off, you talked quite a lot about some of the investments being made by ABB uh, in the digital transformation space. A question, therefore, following that is, what do you really see the future looking like in the world of digital in the next two or three years? Uh, thanks, thanks uh, Rose. Of, co of course, it's, it's, it's difficult to pre predict the future, but I think maybe to, to look what is on the, on the road map and the agenda, let's, let's take a quick look at what has been happening over the past few years since we launched the, um, the ABD ability. As, as you remember, it all started with the creation of the, of the platform, right? When, when the name of the game was um, standardization and, and replication. And uh, we first were addressing the data ownership and cybersecurity, then you know, starting incorporating uh, advanced uh, technologies such as analytics, AI, digital twins. But going forward, I believe it's, it's about, of course, scaling and moving towards autonomy, probably. Uh, while today we're focusing on, on so-called architectural control points, uh, and we aim to build this system-level digital solutions, so that, that tomorrow we, we, we hopefully could enable our customers uh, to run really autonomous operations. So I would say the autonomy would be, would, would be the, the, key, uh, the key word going forward. Fantastic. Thank you, Anton. So then to follow on from that, when we're looking at all of these automation and, and solutions that are really all-encompassing, enterprise-wide solutions, the area of security and cybersecurity becomes extremely pertinent, I'm sure, to many of our existing customers out there. So a question for you then is, looking at that importance of cybersecurity, what is your point of view when looking at the decision to have either an on-prem solution, an on-premise solution uh, for all of these automation uh, applications, or to whether to look to the cloud? What's your uh, perspective on making that consideration between the two? No, that, that, that's, that's definitely a hot, hot topic, Rose, and I think cybersecurity, I'm sure, will address during the next couple of days. And for sure, we're working constantly to address it. So on one hand, uh, we, we are leveraging the best cybersecurity expertise that our partners have. That's why I mentioned, of course, the importance of partners. As you know, our SaaS solutions are, are built on uh, Microsoft Azure. And needless to say that Azure Security Center is probably the most sophisticated, one of the most sophisticated infrastructure uh, security systems for, for cybersecurity. Uh, well, we also signed the uh, Cybersecurity Tech Accord, which is a cross-industry alliance, which unites both IT and IoT players to address the cybersecurity matters. So, I mean, that goes without saying that we are actively working on, on this topic. But back to your question on cloud versus non-cloud, I think we're also listening to our customers and, and trying to adjust our roadmap to the, to the customer needs. And for sure, as you mentioned, the loudest feedback that we, we've heard was, you know, cloud solutions are not always trusted due to many different reasons in different countries or different environments and industries. And uh, while, of course, we are promoting cloud architectures uh, and we're big believers in ABV that cloud architectures could really bring a lot of benefits, 
Uh, we also hear and build out the hybrid solutions that can deliver the functionality in the, in the edge environment. And I hope that this definitely help uh, also reassure the customers and help them more, feel more secure uh, by, by choosing specific you know, hybrid architectures on, on the edge. So yeah, speaking briefly, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in cloud, but for, for, for the customers that's still a little bit doubtful, uh, the, there, there, is a, there is a hybrid and edge solutions that come coming up. Fantastic. Well, following on nicely from there, we've got a question from a member of our audience here live who's asking, how do you think you will use AI, artificial intelligence slash ML, machine learning, in your applications in the near future? Well, definitely, I mean, you'll hear more about, about this in, in the sessions. One of the examples uh, that artificial intelligence is, is really bringing um, enormous benefits for us and saving time and cost is is pattern uh, pattern recognition? You know, imagine the uh, the bill of material, right, for, for electrical projects, uh, which is which is pretty uh, pretty heavy set of document, and it takes hours and hours to um, you know to uh, to to arrive there from the from the single line diagram, and by using the pattern recognition, uh, the uh, and, and artificial intelligence technology. Uh, we can really speed up the uh, the translation of uh, of single line diagram into bill of material in a matter of you know seconds and minutes compared to to hours that it used to take and now is is taken uh, in in the usual projects. I think that's one of the examples where AI is actually quite hands on uh, in the area of el electrification that could really make our life much, much simpler and, uh, and, and faster, of course. Mm -hmm. I, hope, I hope it answers the question with, with an example. Fantastic. No, absolutely. So then, based on that, if we're looking at the ABB Ability Solutions, there's a need, of course, to be able to make a lot of decisions based on data. What are ABB doing today? What are we doing today in order to really extract decision-making information from the masses of data being generated by our assets and systems. No, oh, absolutely. And, and I think that's precisely the, the topic for, for Andreas, uh, um, uh, Andreas' uh, presentation right, right after. So I think I, I, will, I, will, I will let Andrea to, uh, to, to cover this deeper. But in, in, in my view, uh, when it comes to the ongoing and future development for ABB uh, electrification digital solutions. And that will be, of course, stretching uh, in a pretty converged space in different areas. Take the energy management where we're actively investing. I believe it would be stretching towards the integration with, again, autonomous systems that I mentioned, micro reads, um, more sophisticated load management. When it comes to the, to the buildings, uh, the interesting area here to, again, digitize, get the data inputs and turn them into actionable intelligence and outcomes is specifically in the area of mid-complexity buildings. I'm talking about buildings of two to 10 square meters. And you know, 80% of, of these buildings are currently not automated at all. So obviously this, um, you know, these digital, uh, digital solutions specifically targeting these type of buildings could be a, a really a deal breaker and a, and a path forward to bring um, intelligence into this small, mid-sized buildings. And of course, electric, electric mobility, right? The topic which is again on our agenda and high on our priority. Um, uh, the, 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 key, the key topic here is, is fleet management. And the question is, how do fleet operators manage the transition towards the electric fleets? And how, do, how would they make the most out of the fleet's performance? Not only charging and, and routing, but also battery lifetime, et cetera, et cetera. So I think here, again, when it comes to electric fleets, the, uh, the intelligence from the big arrays of data could, could again be a huge value driver. So that links us back then, of course, to the fact that with all this data coming in, that data all needs to be processed in order for it to lead to those actionable insights that you mentioned there. Is there any difference in your mind between uh, whether an on-premise computing solution is better or whether a cloud computing solution is better when it comes to processing those masses of data? 
for sure, cloud is 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 the way to to extract the benefits from 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 the big data, which uh, in the past we were able we were never be able to realize uh, on prem, uh, and that's that's exactly why the, the cloud is on, is on is on the rise. Um, I personally a big believer that cloud is a is a friend, uh, not not a foe. Uh, again, I think we are more and more at ease uh, processing our data on cloud for personal reasons. Uh, now, again, um, you know, we are, we are cloud connected. Uh, we store our uh, photos, emails on, on cloud, and I think we are more and more at ease. When it comes to industrial applications, I fully understand and appreciate the criticality of certain industries. Uh, I believe the, 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 the technology will show and convince us that uh, the benefits of, uh, of of cloud and the the value that the um, that the cloud computing could bring uh, in in specific uh, domains such as energy asset management, building automation, mobility would definitely outweigh the, the concerns that um, that some of our uh, customers uh, may may have today. Thank you, Anton. And a, a bit of a pertinent question here from a member of our audience, talking about the current uh, state of our socio-economic environment due to COVID-19. The question is, do you, Anton, see COVID-19 as a risk or an opportunity for ABB electrification? Well, uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's, a, that's a tricky question, because if I say well, it's just the opportunity, and we should embrace it. I think probably I wouldn't be I wouldn't be fully honest with myself. Definitely, uh, economic crisis has always negative impact on on the industry, and electrification is is not an exception. Uh, we could we could see that some of the projects uh, are on hold or frozen. A lot of uncertainty is there, and of course, is the risk that uh, you know global economic recession that might unfold could impact our sectors as well, uh, freeze the the budgets that would be otherwise implemented in the innovation. But at the same time, uh, of course, that's an opportunity, and uh, this is precisely driven by the digitalization. Uh, I bet again, speaking in simple terms, we wouldn't be able to embrace digital technologies if we were not forced by by the crisis to to really jump into into the digital pool and uh, and, and 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 embrace it now uh, and and I think that really fosters the adoption of of our uh, our services within electrification in the areas that I've mentioned so for sure there is there is an opportunity to accelerate the digital transformation because of the because of the restrictions that that the global covid crisis has imposed on us but to push on that a bit further, Anton, are you seeing more customers come to us willing to talk about digital solutions now within this crisis? Uh, well, well, def definitely. I mean, um, not not to mention the effort that we are also taken to to bring the, the technologies and spread them for our uh, for our customers. Take the the campaign that we launched right after the COVID uh, crisis started. It was in April uh, where we announced that you know we we make uh, our digital software as a service solutions free of charge this year again to help customers uh, uh, you know make the most out of them and some of the technologies like uh, IUPS Guard that helps um, monitor the uh, inoperable power supplies that are especially critical in the areas like uh, hospitals for instance you know and, and this is of huge importance nowadays. With, uh, with the medical uh, industry fighting against the COVID, we, we could see the reaction. Some of the projects are already in place, like the, um, like the hospital in Sao Paulo that implemented our digital technology to ensure the, 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 power, uh, the power supply and, and manage the electrical assets. We, we, we can see the feedback. Of course, it doesn't come immediately that, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, the, it's the wave that completely covered us and, and the adoption of digital technologies happened over sudden, but definitely we can see the traction and I think more and more acceptance uh, that is driven by the, by the situation and, and the need to, uh, to move on and, and embrace digital technology. Fantastic. With that, I believe that's all we're going to have time for in this session. So, 
First of all, to our audience out there, when you do exit this session, we will be prompting you to fill out a poll and a survey. We'd be very grateful for any feedback you would be willing to provide us. In the meantime, thank you so much again, Anton, for joining us all the way from Russia. And to, for everyone in our audience, of course, thank you for joining our very first session. We hope to see you later today and later in the week as well for more of our digital dialogues in this area of very pertinent interest. Uh, but until then, we thank you very much and we look forward to welcoming you next time. Do stay very safe and well. Thank you very much, Rose. Thank you all. Stay tuned.